everybody. You've reached Ben Baker at your living, your living brand uh, dot live show. How are you? It is Wednesday. It is the 19th and good morning. It's a beautiful day here in Vancouver. I'm excited. I've got Warren Whitlock coming to me live from Vegas today, and we're going to talk to him all about the show. Now, what this show is about, it's about the vision and value of your brand. My belief is that every brand is unique. Every brand tells a story, and I go out every single week, and I find a guest that I can talk to and find out what is unique about their brand, what's their story, what makes them interesting, and what makes them valuable to their audience. Now, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, you can find me at yourbrandmarketing.com. What we do is we consult, we teach, and we speak on brand, message, market, vision, and value. We want to be your chief storyteller. We want to tell people why you do what you do, have them engage, have them understand, and have them tell their story for you. So, you know what? Let's get to Warren. Let's find out about him. Let's find out what he does and what he does. You know, Warren Whitlock is uh, the author. In 2008, he created a book called Profitable Social Media, Business Results Without Playing Games. He is the host of Social Media Radio. He was named in 2013 to the Forbes Top 10 Social Media Power Influencer. So, you know, Warren knows social media. He has been around this game for, you know, 30 plus years. He's he's going to be someone that's going to be a lot of fun to talk to. So let's bring Warren on board and say, good morning. Hi, Warren. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm playing with Periscope right now. So uh, that's I'm not checking my phone. Okay. Uh, well, I sort of am because I'm running Periscope. Let's see. We have uh, we have 36 people right now looking at, at what this is. So I just turned it on. To play Excellent. With it. And so we're doing a Facebook Live show and Periscoping it at the same time. I love this. It at the same time, and let me uh, let me put it here. So I, now now that I'm talking, I got to switch the camera to me, and then I'll set it down. And we'll figure out maybe, you know, because it's a last minute thing. I didn't even think of doing it. So, oh, great, great. There's the, there's the, oh, that shot's not working. There we are. Oh, yeah. Okay. So hey, we're, we're, uh, we're live. Okay, we're technical. Go. We're good. We're live. If you want to see the real thing, come on over to Facebook. And, uh, yeah, I'm Warren Whitlock there, just like I am on, on Twitter. And you can watch me. So, yeah, we're up, we're, uh, holding at 41 viewers so perfect so it's, it's good to figure out that it was hundreds and they decided not to listen <laughs> <laughs> you know what the more the more listeners we can have the better i appreciate that your audience coming on board you know so that's great so we're the first thing i want to ask you is, is is you know what let's start off by what's your what's your story what you know tell me the warren whitlock story tell me tell oh, me who you are and what you do well you know it's not a subject I'm very familiar with, uh, so let me let me let me try to get through it. Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was born a small child, and uh, actually, uh, what I love to tell is that is I'm six or seven years old, and I'm at church, and I remember because I'd heard it before, and but what I remember is that somebody was going to the trouble of telling a group of little kids, you need to live your religion every day. And I'd heard that, you know, which basically means be a good person, not just when you go to church, right? Uh, and it, it struck me as, as odd, even, even as I'm a little kid. Why would I treat some people differently than others? Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I know that's not what the what the church people's message was. The teacher, or whoever was saying it, uh, but you know, they they mentioned it, and it was the it was what stuck with me is they mentioned it to the kids. So right. This must be important. You go to school, you got to treat people good. Uh, yeah, like why wouldn't I? Um, and and so that stuck with me until. Um, uh, I, I got to college, and I actually went to a church college right. where where I took a business class, and I'm being told it's a dog eat dog world. And I started reading books about you know a, a couple of things. I was drawn to the to persuasion, anything about that. So uh, psycho cybernetics was big, and thinking grow rich, of course, and and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And they were telling me, 
you know, that you know, can get anything you want out of life if you help enough other people get what they want. Until until I but meanwhile I was hearing dog eat dog and right. competition and war and sports metaphors about business. Okay. And what the heck do you mean by that? Why why are we thinking why are we talking like that? And it's interesting. I regularly ask my Twitter audience, uh, you know, I, I put this quote about business is a combination of war and sport. And people come at, come at back with everything from all business is evil to um uh, you know, we, uh, <laughs> to, to whatever, you know, or right. you know, doggy dog world. But meanwhile, I got, I, out of college, I got a sales job and I started studying the sales stuff, how to be a better salesman. And there was the, you know, 13 closes that'll get them every time. That was right. the training back then. And I just, eh, I didn't like any of this stuff. And I found Zig Ziglar. Love Zig. Zig is the best. Zig is best. amazing. Yeah, and he said you can get anything you want out of life if you help enough other people get what they want. I'm going yeah. like, that's the Sunday school message. Mm-hmm. It's making sense now. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. And I took some training by uh, Ken Greenwood, who's it's radio, uh, selling right. uh, radio ads. And um, it's based on the training of Larry Wilson, who did uh, – I don't know if you can remember that uh, – uh, in the eighties, this guy got famous for being, he was the youngest member of the, uh, million dollar round table, which is the okay. industry thing, right? Yeah, that and I know that's what he was known for in the seventies. And he did this course, uh, and was adapted for, for radio because they said, you know, there's, there's, uh, here's, here's normal ethics. Here's used car salesman or reputation for good. Ethics. Right. It's just some ethical people, but they, they got a bad reputation. Sure. Here's a normal, like, salesman reputation. The rest of the world's up here. Uh, sales reputation, you know, and, and way down here is politicians. Uh, but, oh, I'm off screen, so let me yeah. do this. No, way I know what you're saying. We're, we're, we're over here somewhere. <laughs> down near the bottom is used car salesman, and radio is just below that. Um, because the radio salesman comes in and says, you want 30-second spot, 60-second spot. I got them. I got a special deal. If you buy 18, I'll give you 19. You know, all oh, those kind of things. Well, you buy here. I'll give you the AM. You know, and that was how they sold stuff. And right. this guy no, walk in and find out something about their business. Talk to them. And they, they had a special extra bonus with a guy named Don Beveridge who said, uh, he was going to say, look, life is going to be different into the 1980s and the 1990s. Mm-hmm. He said, you're going to, you know, you're going to walk in, you're going to talk to them, and then you're going to say, great, I'm going to go back and I'm going to research this. And I'm going to find something that works for your business based on what we've been talking about. And you're going to get up, you're going to walk out of the office, and if you if you turned around, you'd see their jaw drop, but don't turn around because that's – bad manners get up walk out of the office <laughs> and then make an appointment and come back again and for a salesman that was just like really i was there i don't have to sell anything to them that, that's, yeah, that's, that's what heresy what are you what are you doing you, you didn't close them right then and there <laughs> yeah 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 so that's the old school selling and yeah. you know this applies to knocking on doors making cold calls yeah. uh you know dialing for dollars all of the things you do you know and i've done stuff I've done all of those. I've yeah, tried me all too. of those. Yeah. I've stood at a at a fair and called people over to a booth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, uh, there's, I've done it with better tactics. Do it. The other thing I found at that time was guerrilla marketing. Right. Guerrilla marketing uses all the uses a war metaphor in its name. Yes. But guerrilla is really a tactic that if you go back before, you know, when Jay Conrad and Levinson came. Uh, he borrowed the term from somebody else. Uh, right. His body. But the term comes from what the way Castro invaded Cuba. Mm-hmm. He did. Castro took a hundred men and lost half of them almost immediately when he invaded Cuba. Right. And so forty guys, and they gained some locals because there there was support for the, the for the rebels. Sure. And they and they sent Che to, to Havana, and Castro took over another city where a welcome arm and everything. Before Che got to Havana, the president got on got on a plane and left town. Right. Gave up Cuba for them because 
one or two guys with a mission got busy with, you know, getting what they wanted. Now, right. you can say good, there's plenty of bad to say about Castro, but sure. that guerrilla tactic that he used there, because he stayed a rebel and, and who knows, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I do know. There's enough facts to say that he did some ruthless things. So, but his, when it was, when, uh, you know, he had been arrested, put in prison when he tried it before. Uh, he had the popular support, but the government was against him. He was what we'd call an yeah. insurgent, uh, not a terrorist because he wasn't blowing stuff up. But, the, you know, we didn't use that word back then. So that's what guerrilla is. Now, think about that when you know, apply that to what we do today. A uh, guerrilla tactic is I'm talking to you. I'm picking up a few people. Somebody listening is going like, Hey, the old guy gets social media. Maybe I could, maybe he'd understand my business because, yep. you know, I'm, I'm over 40. I don't use social media and mm -hmm. that's okay. You know, I could, I, I know how to talk to those people because I was alive back then. And, um, uh, and I, and I call uh, people call me the, uh, the oldest millennial. Um, <laughs> well, we're only as old as we feel, right? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. So I got the, you know, I'm I'm all dressed up at the office office today. I, I, yeah. I even made jokes about how I was gonna, I, you know, I told the wife, kissed the wife, and told her I'm I'm off to work, and and then you know I take ten steps and say I'm here. <laughs> I just calling to let you know I made it to the office. I tell you, the commute was rough, um, but traffic you know, was we, hell. When we get done, it's it, I'm in Las Vegas. It's going to be hot outside. I'm gonna yeah. take off the jacket and put on my uh, my favorite T-shirt. Uh, I refuse to act my age. Um, <laughs> so, well, I um, find, you know, you you came across something really interesting as you talked about the fact that, you know, you've been there, you've done that. You've you've got the history of the marketing business. You have the history and the of, of, and the t-shirt and the video and the scars to go with it, right. you know, as do I, you know, and there's a lot of value in that because, you know, I find there's a lot of millennials coming up that may have the social media chops, but they don't understand the history of, of right. where the marketing came from. And they don't understand the tactics behind the, you know, or the strategy behind the tactics. So if you, if you look at what, um, um, what, what, where, where the divide is there, the people that were around before there was a, you know, a dominance of the internet. Yeah. A millennial, by the way, in Forrester Research did a, did a study and defined millennial. And that's where all the talk of millennials in the workplace went, came yeah. from. And in that they define a millennial as a psychographic term. It's not sure. an age group. No. Uh, and it, and it has to do with whether you think of digital first. Well, I've thought digital first since the eighties. Right. Um, I, I actually got online in 1981. Uh, I was on CompuServe and the other things like that. Uh, uh, the, the, the service that became AOL, um, but mostly CompuServe. And it, I got on there and I talked to people. Right. You know, we told stories, but in text, it was a lot shorter. Sure. Um, <laughs> we did the you same. were probably on the list serves that I was on. Probably at some time, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and so, uh, uh, you know, then in the 90s, I go like, this is finally going where I want. Because I, I was running a store fixing uh, laser printers. And so, uh, you know, that was my business. for I call it my 17 years in the suburbs raising children. Right. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, went to the office every day, had a lot of customers. Had a service crew that went out and did stuff. Did some manufacturing right. because we were refilling toner cartridges, uh, and it actually became a manufacturing operation over the years. And uh, you know, and tried a little bit of everything. It was all because I just did whatever people I thought people wanted, and right. fulfilled that. It was always the same, same message, the same way of doing things, which I think people do today. There's a growth hacking movement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the last several years where it's marketing is something you can engineer. Right. And I think you fundamentally miss that it's people. Meanwhile, there's a lot of people who stopped learning when they got out of college. Yeah. You get a job, you rise to the ranks. And when I see a group of people that are, you know, let's just say our age, right. um, you know, they're over 45. They've yeah. got, to, they've rise to the ranks. They've got a job with the C in the start in corporate America, 
And if I'm with those people and talking to them, they they get it mentally. Right. But they're so busy in the in what it took to get to that career and managing a thousand reports, uh, people underneath them, um, and you know that and keeping the other the stockholders and the board happy. Right. Uh, their, it's their world is different. They don't get in the nitty gritty. I mean, I'm I, I was up late last night working on a on a website on my computer. Right. Um, uh, as an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs have to do a lot more things. So I identify with the entrepreneur at any age, right? And I think it's the same thing. People stay people. For, oh yeah. And know, that's, that's the key thing you, are. you got. It. Yeah. So tell me, or who are your best customers and why do they engage with you? Like what, what's your secret sauce that, that you use to help your best customers? Uh, my best customer is somebody who understands that they're, you know, on the planet to serve. That, uh-huh. uh, you know, while they have a goal, their goal is not to convince the uh, the boss that that they, you know, didn't do anything wrong. Uh, you know, no one ever gets in trouble for buying, um, you know, blue IBM chip. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to say IBM, but yeah, um, <laughs> you said it, so yeah, I'll say true. it. Yeah, it was. Well, it was. I was selling computers and people would buy IBMs, you know. Yeah. Uh, I knew I knew I could build a computer from scratch. It was as good as an IBM. I couldn't guarantee it like IBM. I couldn't put billion-dollar company behind it. I could go to another billion-dollar company, uh, and uh, at the time, it was a Hewlett-Packard dealer. And, you know, it's just good, compact, and, you know, they all make good stuff. Sure. Uh, and it's really the reputation of whether they stand behind it. And so I always found the underdog, somebody to, you know, somebody who was doing a good job yeah. and manufacturing, you know, where you could talk to the guy that made it. And uh, I liked that. And so those are my, my best customers today. Find out, I find out the older I get, the more it's somebody wants those kind of goals and they want, they want to get it and they'd like to accelerate growth. Um, so are you doing so, social media consulting or how are, are you, are you yeah, I, I telling, do some. teaching I, people I, I how to tell their story or? Right. Most, mostly what I end up doing is getting involved in marketing at the CMO type level for, right. and a lot of companies that are, you know, don't have a CMO right. uh, that, or they have a CMO who is lost because it's just, it's overwhelming what you have to know today. Exactly. And so the vast experience helps out. Yeah. So I can get on the get on a call with them and find out what their real goals are. And I, you know, actually, if somebody's goal is to impress their boss and help them too, but most of the time, my favorite customers are the ones who say, "Hey, I want to change the world." And there's one other important thing happening right now. You know about Moore's law and yeah. growing it. You know what, doubling every eighteen months. Uh, and, uh, that runs out in a few years, but Mm -hmm. we still have probably like, uh, double, double again, double again. So eight times what we got right now are in the pipeline coming to the market, a faster, better computers, better bandwidth, 5G is coming on board, which means your cell phone will actually get a good signal. Right. And it will be gigabyte, uh, speeds. And so, you know, that's going to be, there's going to be some rough stuff in there because telecommunications was built to restrict what we're doing. Right. And, and I don't think the telecommunications companies are trying to hold us back anymore. Uh, I don't think I they think can. I think they got up. to a point. Yeah. I don't think they, they can anymore, but that's exactly. a different story. So yeah. the, I, in fact, I gave up fighting net neutrality. I don't, you yeah. know, I, I don't care anymore. Uh, I li- I love the idea. That, that, that you know there should be net neutrality but mm-hmm. eh, i don't care it's going to be so plentiful in a couple of years that uh they're not going to be able to restrict it they're, we're past the boat right. has, the boat has left the station no the boat has left the harbor the, the, tra- that's the a- train has left the harbor uh, yeah that's yeah one of those mix. things i love to mix metaphors we still have <laughs> 20 people on periscope hi Perfect. periscope people um <laughs> so uh anyway uh and but but that's nothing compared to what nanotechnology is bringing. Right. So everything from 3D printing to making nanotube type materials. Imagine if you could take today's car, literally 
take the the material that's in it, make ten new cars that are that are ten times as strong. So so they ten times as safe, one tenth the cost, yeah. ten times as safe, and and will you know go as fast as you need. And of course, we're not going to need a driver. Uh-huh. Uh, and all of that is possible. In, and it's all technology that is there. This is proven stuff. So we're at a point where if this is the curve, we're going to go like this. Right. And we're like, it's like we're hitting a wall and we're right at that wall right now uh, that with the stuff that's coming out. And so the easy thing to know is that uh, I say this, this is quoting uh, Peter Diamandis, who says, uh, we're going to grow a hundred times uh, what we did in the last 10 years, or let's see, no, we're going to have more growth in the next 10 years than we'll add in the last 100. Right. Not 100 times. Uh, but that's 10 times the growth. And I go, I'm like, wow. Because, you know, I've not been alive 100 years. I know I look like I, I have, but not quite 100 years. Uh, and, you know, about two-thirds of that. And uh, uh, I've seen a lot of change. And most of it's been in the last 10 to 20 years. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I didn't have an iPhone 10 years ago. Right. How did I live without an iPhone? That's um, right. And, uh, and everybody looks forward and says, well, yeah, rate of change is going to accelerate, not slow down. Because a lot of people don't want it to, to accelerate. Yeah. But it's going to accelerate. We all accept that. You know, we're kind of stuck. The machines are going to take over stuff. Uh, Google's AI is actually writing software now. Mm-hmm. Think about that. Software that writes software. You know, so, so Warren, I got a question for you. Exponentially fast. And yeah. with that happening, you need to be growing your company at five or 10 times or going out of business. And so that's, so I'm finally answering the who I want as a customer. Yeah. Somebody who wants to serve the world, but also wants to do it in a much bigger way than oh, we're yeah. doing today. So here's a question for you based based on that. Where do you see your value moving forward? So, I mean, in this technological you know, world that we're, we're in, I mean, we're in, we're riding this wave, you know, and I'm always looking five years out with my customers. I'm always looking, you know, I, I think looking more than five years out is crazy because, you, you know, after that, you're stargazing. Yeah. But yeah. if you can look three to five years out and be able to work with your clients on a strategic basis to be able to help them, you know, be more effective in what they do. What are you what doing, doing to help? Is, I think what you're doing is, is absolutely right. Eh, 19, we lost one. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, bye. Must have been uh, my question. We, uh, 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 in in, in the, uh, the longer term, I think it's more telling the stories. Things yeah. haven't changed. We're always trying to, like, this is why, this is why I, like, I like Twitter. Um, you know, I can tweet, I can put everything I need to say in less than 140 characters. And, you know, it took the first hundred thousand tweets to get to where I could do that. Right. Uh, now I rarely have to send two tweets to somebody. Mm-hmm. And it's always talking to somebody. It's a person. It's not a platform to me. Right. I'm having a conversation with one person and, you know, a few thousand of my friends are, are reading that tweet. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and sharing stuff that I think will be helpful. And I think everybody needs to get their message down to, down to what are the two or three words that define what you're doing? Uh, so, you know, storytelling is a, is a good one. Uh, but, and you've got to do that for your customers. You've got to make it that easy to do. And it's what I do. It's, yeah. Um, make sure we are on target for what the story is, find something that is profitable and then repeat it like crazy. So if you've been telling your story to one customer at a time, it's time to get an ad that goes out to a lot of people. Advertising still works on a mass scale, but even better is mass personalization. Yeah. So that now with Facebook advertising, we can hone it down to something that talks to, basically talk to one person, but the ad will go out to, you know, a, a million people. But there are a million people in the in the right geographical area and all the demographic stuff and more important psychographics absolutely it's only people who like to shop online who mm-hmm. are you know investing more than have a portfolio over x and and own a home and you know and and they were then they're online today on facebook 
you know exactly who these people are and you can talk to them. And when they respond, you set up a system that you can respond individually. Right. So, uh, you know, I have 500,000 Twitter followers, but if somebody tweets at Warren Whitlock and, and uh, puts a question in there, I can answer it. Right. So you can try it out. You know, if you're, if you're listening, you know, try it. I will, I will answer you. I can yeah. manage it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to describe that process, but I know in 10 years of, of tweeting, that I, you know, I as I grew, I can ha- I can handle five hundred thousand like I used to be able to handle five hundred. Right. Uh, it's not like when you have fifty because then you can actually read what everybody tweets. But exactly. Somewhere about five hundred, you lose control <clears throat> of everything. But mm-hmm. if you look what your name is, you can't answer everybody. If you have a brand and you have ten million customers, you have staff that's supposed to be doing customer service and helping people. Uh, and customer service is like stands out like a sore thumb today because you listen to somebody, they tell you their story, you get them what they want, and you move on to the next one, and they go like, "Wow, a human being listened to me." <laughs> uh, you know, that's it in a nutshell. But you know, implementing takes some time. You need to find out something that's profitable. Get how much it costs to how much you're going to make from the customer, how much it costs to get the customer. And if number one is bigger than number two, you're in business. You can scale like crazy. Yeah. It's true. I mean, there's, there's more customers out mm-hmm. than you want to know. Let me say this because sure. thanks to billions of people online, no matter what you're selling, what you're doing, there are a million people wanting to buy from you. Absolutely. So knocking on a door, cold calling, trying to force somebody to – talk to somebody into doing something they don't want to do all that closing techniques, handling objections. No, no. Now you need to find the people that want to buy and then go help them buy. Well, it's the whole Seth Godin thing of of finding a tribe. It's, it's realizing that, you know what? There's billions of people out there that don't want to buy from you, but there might be a million people out there that want to buy from you. And you know what? Focus on the million. Yeah. Focus on the people that want to buy from you, who who are interested in what you do, who are who who think that what you do is valuable, and spend the time talking to those people. Don't waste your time spending your time telling people that who could care less about you what you do and why you do it because they're not your customers and they right. never will be. I have a yeah, if, and if somebody says to me their market is everybody, I just go like, okay, great, you need my help uh, <laughs> desperately. You're not going to be able to reach everybody. There's there's somebody in Mongolia that's never going to find out you you have a dry cleaner in Peoria, right? Um, you know, um, and, it's, and that's okay. Yeah, uh, they, they they don't use dry cleaning and they never will. They'll never meet you. Forget about it. It's six degrees of separation, six pickles today. Yeah, you could get to anybody, but let's not bother. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, you were talking about uh, uh, you were talking about that, and I'd mentioned objections. I remember. My friend, he just passed, uh, Tom Justin, uh, wrote a great book about how to take no for an answer. Yeah. And uh, one of the things in it was the old school, um, you know, uh, the, it, my favorite story was he told, uh, a, a, a guy told told his wife he was going to get a sale, not to let him in the house until he had 15 no's. And so he went out and made his presentation all day long. And sure enough, when instead of getting re- rejected and, and uh, dejected after five no's and going home, he stayed out. And right. on six or seven, he made a big sale. Yeah. And he's so excited. And then he went and made another little sale. And then and then he goes home, and the wife greets him at the door and says, how many no's did you get? 13? Go back out there. <laughs> yeah. So a uh, great story uh, about handling rejection and dealing with that. But, uh, the, but the, the point is, it, those people saying no are doing you a big favor. Absolutely. I want somebody to say not interested, no thanks, and I do it all the time. I'm yeah. amazed at the responses I get today compared to some time ago. I get, um, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm on LinkedIn, and and that's now there's a great prospecting tool. Yeah. And say, yeah. I can tell by your profile we have the similar interest. You want to buy this, and I'm going like. No, how no. to do lead gen is not what I need. You know, I'm yeah. a lead gen expert. Why mm-hmm. would I be buying that from you? You know, and and I can't tell you how often I get told 
that somebody can help me get more Twitter followers. Oh yeah. You know, and if I bother to look, they have 12, you know, yeah. um, or, or I know they're using a tactic to get the 500 that they have. Right. And, and I go like, you know, I have 500,000. I don't want to brag, but you know, I don't need your help. Yeah. And so I tell that person, no, and not the, not the spammy ones, but, uh, but if, if somebody really seems to be sending out one of those things where they're going to read the answer, I take the time to say, no, thanks. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't do the braggy thing, but, uh, you know, I, so I, I got past that emotion. I, I call it maturity. Uh, yeah. and, uh, it, you know, it takes some doing, I still feel that way. Sure. And I say, you know, no, thanks. I can't, I'm going to pass on this. And I make it strong enough that they know not to try again. And then, of yeah. course, some do. The foreign worker who's been told to go out and keep prospecting right. answers me or whatever. But a lot of them, when you can tell that it's a real person doing their job, they go, thank you. And they, you know, they're, they're taking it as a rejection. And it's, you know, that's their problem to deal with. But yeah. we're, it's done with. I don't have to have a discussion. Because I can go to a booth at an expo. And spend two hours talking to a kid, telling them these stories, having a good time. I love going to expos because sure. there's something I can do to help somebody at every booth. Right. And it's fun. I, I My energy is so great from that. But, yeah. you know, I've been told to leave a booth more than once. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if I just told them, you know, I, in fact, I start off with saying, hey, I'm up here. I stopped at your booth because you have a bowl of candy. Uh, I like this candy. I'm going to stand here until you tell me to go away. Yeah. And I have absolutely no interest in buying which one. They say, well, do you consider yourself a person who needs it? And I go, no, not at all. <laughs> but, I'm buying it, but I'm going to eat your candy and anyway. And you had candy. And then, and then, and then, you know, sometimes I say, well, I'm sorry. I took up, you know, 20 yeah. minutes of your time in a busy day here. And it's a, no, it was kind of slow. The people, the sessions are in the, the crowd's yeah. not here. Thanks for keeping me company. You know, yeah. I learned something from talking to you. And even in the most positive thing like that, I'm going like, but, but I wasted their time and mine. Exactly. You know, if I went up and said, no, thanks, or didn't stop at their booth, it would be okay. Yeah. Uh, and so, and that's what we need is decision. Uh, well, what we need to do is realize that every time you say no, it frees you up to say yes to something else or exactly. vice versa. The old, um, you know, if there's, if if one door closes, uh, another you, another door opens. Might open, or you can just go ahead and break a window. You got um, it. So. Well, listen, we're at the bottom of the hour. Let me ask you one last question, then I'm going to let you go because I love you and I could sit here and speak for another two hours. But you know what? Let's let it get uh, into that that whole wasting time area. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So tell me, says what are the, what's the one thing? you want people to remember about Warren Whitlock when, when, when you're gone, when you're out of the room, what's the one thing that you want people to remember about you? Uh, I, I, I want them to know that I can make, I can, that I can, we can accelerate whatever it is that we're doing. The future is going to move fast and we're ready to go ahead and, and come up with a plan to do that. And so when you're stuck on something, I've been there, I've done it. Come on, give me a call. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked me a question on Facebook once, led to an, the largest client I ever had, was good for me, also led to them uh, going from losing more money every week. Their sales were dropping like crazy in the hundreds of thousands per week. And uh, I spent, you know, 10 minutes doing what they asked for, saw the, the what the bigger problem was and told them about it. And it went right back up. And boy, nothing's more fun than doing that. And if you think, you know, if you think you're stuck, you think you hit a brick wall, it may be that you're hitting that brick wall that we're going to accelerate and go a whole lot faster. Yeah. And I'm ready to help you with that transition. That's great. Well, Warren, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you taking the time with us. You know, it's been great hearing your story. Hang on a second. We're, I'm just going to say goodbye to everybody, and then you and I can sign off together, okay? All right. So, all right. So next next week, I got Gary Bizzo coming on to you. Gary, Gary is a buddy of mine that I've known for 15 years. He is a lion on the LinkedIn community. He is a giver. He is one of these guys that, you know, really loves to tell a good story and his social media is, is his jam as well. And you know what? He comes from the old ad agency business and is a lot of fun. So we're going to have a lot of fun together. So 
This, uh, once again, my name is Ben Baker. My company is Your Brand Marketing. Wow. Wow. What we do is we work with you to be able to say, you know what, what do you do? Why do you do it? What do you want to do with your life? You know, who do you want to affect and how, how do they find you valuable? We consult, we teach, and you know what, we speak. So come talk to us. We'd love to have you on board. And uh, until next week, have a great day.